Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we have Monique Morrow on the show. Hi, Monique. Hey there. How are you doing? Great, great. I'm so excited to talk to Monique. Um, you know, if anybody knows about the future, it's Monique Morrow, who's actually really kind of shaped so many technologies and so many businesses over her career. And now is the Senior Distinguished Architect of Emerging Technologies at Cineverse. I'll let her tell you a little bit more in a, in a bit about what Cineverse is up to and driving things like um, ledger, ledger based technologies. Um, but before we get there, tell us a little bit about your background, Monique, and, and your career. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, I, I would kind of say that I'm an accidental engineer. I, I like to, uh, because it's all about pivots at the end of the day. So when I started out my career, I actually, I studied French and, and, and ge geography and history. And I thought I was gonna be a diplomat when I graduated, but you know, you come out with a degree like that in Silicon Valley, well, uh, it's kind of a wake up call. And the diplomatic core didn't really work, especially if I'm talking about like 80s and 90s, you know, I'm dating myself a bit. Um, but I was in the industry at a very exciting time uh, when uh, people were looking at the internet, when people are looking at how do you commercialize work on the internet and so on. And for me, um, that is one pivot that led to another pivot that led to another pivot. And so I just got really excited about uh, networking. I got really excited about the work around the internet and um, not only was able to, in Silicon Valley terms, uh, to go out and get degrees and what I needed to get degrees into, you know, that's a the nice thing about working in the Valley, but also understanding the business more. And so, uh, uh, you know, through that, I got involved into uh, companies that uh, were very interested uh, in this particular space. And one thing led to another. I mean, I ended up traveling the world. I ended up, you know, some people like join the army to, to travel <laughs> the world or, uh, but I actually uh, was able to do that in a, in a way that uh, led me to Asia, that led me to Hong Kong, that led me to Switzerland, where I live. Uh, you know, I was born in the United States. I was born in uh, North Carolina. And I, I traveled because my father was in the military, too. So, um, you know, the nice thing now is that uh, as you're evolving, and this is the lesson number one to learn, pivot. You, 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 and, and life is going to be about pivots. Right. And it's not a linear, it's not a, it's not a ladder. I always say that it's not a ladder of your career. It's going to be, it's just, uh, you're going to be able to be able to change and change the way that uh, results in a gro growth. And that has led me to where I'm at at Silicon, uh, where I'm at at Cineverse, um, which is, uh, you know, the first senior distinguished architect and emerging technology. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll get into Cineverse in, in yeah. a second. And, and I, I love your, keep coming. <laughs> I loved your, um, your, your statement of kind of the accidental engineer, accidental um, engineer, uh, wildly humble on your behalf, because I, I think that uh, anybody that knows your background from, you know, your days as a CTO at, at Cisco onward, it's been, yeah. you know, a spectacular career and obviously one that has, has, has helped shape the you know, the industry, the technology industry. And so, you know, we're, ex I'm ex really excited to hear what you're doing at Cineverse now. Right. So uh, I'll take a step back before I go to Cineverse because S Cisco offered me a wonderful platform. It was 16, seven, almost 17 years. And um, one of the things that uh, was able to do, as you said, I was one of their CTOs was to actually understand the line of businesses to go from uh, research to services, to be able to go to, uh, you know, sales in the, in the, in the region, like in Asia Pacific and so on. And uh, they've done a fantastic job and they continue to do a great job in that area. So I've learned a lot at, at Cisco and also being in, in the Valley, which, mm -hmm. uh, which has been very, very helpful uh, to me. So it's, it's a small world. You take with you these, these particular skill sets. Uh, at Cineverse, you know, Cineverse is a 30 plus year company, if you don't know it, it's based yeah. in Tampa. It's a U.S.-based company, and um, 
they are really around mobile technologies. You know, uh, the SMS is MM, the, the, the messaging that you get in the world. I mean, we have like 700 customers or so, but we're changing too as a, as a, as a company. We're a technology company and we are also changing. Um, probably have read that uh, Twilio is um, investing $750 million into, uh, into our company. And so, which is fantastic, you know, and perhaps we will, uh, we don't know how, if we're going to go public, uh, if it's through us back or not, but, but there's a lot of excitement in, in this mm -hmm. space. And so being the first senior distinguished architect uh, in emerging technologies is, 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 uh, is, has been exciting for me. I say first because there's got to be others, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I absolutely think that that, that mobile space is, uh, groundbreaking. It's actually kind of one of the spaces that I would say that somehow partially got neglected for a while, I think, and now it's yeah. kind of rebounded and really pushed forward because it's such a powerful medium and a channel. Um, and so I'm excited to hear, uh, you know, the types of things that are, are a focus. So, I mean, um, you know, I, I see a lot of this discussion about kind of the, the diversified ledger technologies. Uh, what are you guys working on in, in that space? So with um, so one of the areas that is part of our strategy is that, you know on um, blockchain or what we call the di distributed ledger technology because there are many types of um, blockchains or ledgers whether they're Corda whether it's uh, Hyperledger Fabric uh, you name it we have different types or Ethereum is okay is a common one and so with us uh, with what we've been doing is thinking about smart contracts and what you do in settlements right because mm -hmm. one of the aspects of what we how we work is around roaming and settlements how do you carry an agreement together how do you have that uh, layer of trust or not untrust but here we're rather permissioned uh, such that you can actually create a smart contract for settlement and that gets into you know blockchain for a wholesale and roaming as an example of a business that we are uh, quite engaged and quite active in. Mm -hmm. And part of what I'm doing too is I, I hold a le uh, industry leadership role at the, the GSMA, the Mobile uh, Industry Forum, um, co-chairing with my colleague from GSMA on DLT. So it's no longer, I can say it's no longer hype. It's uh, people, uh, Organizations are adopting DLT for their business. We see that. Uh, we see large companies doing it around use cases, whether it is, you know, a supply chain, uh, typically. I IBM has been one of the examples here um, in this space. And so for us, it's, uh, we see it uh, really as uh, a launch pad to other, other potential use cases of businesses for us. So certainly DLT is, a, and, and, and the harder problem to solve, I'm just going to say this one thing, the harder yeah. problem to solve is around interoperability. Uh, we should not underestimate how difficult that will be in the industry, but excited. That's, to be I mean, that, that's one of those challenges that has always, it, it, especially in the mobile industry, I think, because you have so many hardware and software elements, um, getting all of that interoperability correct has always been a challenge. But I, I can see how what you're outlining, what you guys are working on can, uh, can, can really assist in that reconciliation process where you have literally billions of microtransactions happening, right? Uh, that essentially need to be kind of rectified and so and rationalized. Correct, correct, yeah. But you don't wanna put everything on a, on, on, load everything on a ledger, right? So you don't wanna put your personal data on a ledger, et cetera, there's some best practices there. But uh, it's, look, I believe in something, uh, to understand what you don't know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why I went off and got a degree in this space and I continue to learn. But and it's uh, exciting times. Uh, but blockchain is just one of the areas that I'm, I've been sort of working on, and right. And so yeah, DLT so tell, tell me about what other things are, that you're excited about. So I'm 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 excited about two other areas. Uh, one one is um, if you if you kind of label a brand me. One is the, the area around ethics and technology, or technology for good, or social good. That's a yeah. that's a particular area where I'm. For example, a co-chair of I, uh, IEEE and um, Ethics and Extended Reality, um, and it's it's phenomenal the space here that uh, we believe it's just the tip of the t uh, iceberg in this area, because now uh, people are trying to understand what are the legal Im implications, what what does that mean uh, for ex extended reality, and so on. The other space that I'm uh, working in too is around 
where I've gotten involved with the World Economic Forum as uh, being a member for, for Cineverse on the Data Policy Council is around data and, uh, and what are the uh, uses of data? What does that governance model look like? Uh, again, a tip of the iceberg uh, uh, discussion. But uh, you know, looking at how we deal with data, how we deal with pol uh, pr um, privacy, very major, very major. I work with uh, uh, leaders in my company around this space um, and uh, security is also underpinning of that area. And uh, I think the uh, other component is looking at, uh, you know, speaking of security, what does quantum security and quantum networking look like? That's gonna be a cross domain uh, discipline that we see. So you can imagine there's, Quite a bit. You know, I mean, money, <laughs> money, you're, you're talking about oh. so many, just, they're just massive topics. And, and I, I, I love them all. And I, I can see how they're all like interwoven and definitely impact one another. The ethics element yeah. certainly is a, is a huge space um, for, for what, what you're working on. And then also, obviously, just anything with machine learning, we've seen that mm -hmm. just creep up time and time again. Um, and the cybersecurity elements and privacy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I hope I hope you can can give us the uh, the answer for that one. That that's the uh, that's one that kind of worries all of us constantly. So, um, but but great topics and really really critical. Um, you know, yep. in, in, in with with all of those uh, components and and really kind of all of the challenges that we've seen in the last year that we've faced. Um, you know, where, where are you finding um, people are, are focused right now of all those topics? I mean, what's, what's, the, what's the kind of the, 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 the thing that seems to be capturing the imagination of some of these clients that you guys are working with? I mean, so, so you know, everything is contextual at the end, end of the day. So uh, I can say that Cineverse as a company is pivoting itself, right? Culturally, it's pivoting, which is great because it's all about that growth pattern uh, that we have discussed. I think a, a lot of, uh, I think of what we're, what we're trying to get into more of what we believe because we sit on these assets is how do you deal with the Internet of Things and security? You know, uh, we are pulsating information constantly, but that's from a consumer's perspective, especially. So how do you how do you start to do, put forensics in place uh, such that there, you're actually um, gathering behaviors of a device itself and you're able to detect when there is sort of a, you know, a delta in that. So that's an, that's something that uh, we, we believe is going to be much more important in the industry as we move uh, forward. And certainly with clients and with, uh, we believe this is an ecosystem play, uh, we're gonna see more and more of that uh, developing. Uh, if you think about 5G, what does 5G security mean, oh, right? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, what, is, what, is that, what, is that, what does that really look like for us? And so, uh, you know, these are sort of the, the tips and tips of the iceberg of discussions that we're having as as an industry, but also as as uh, people within, you know, not only. Yeah, no, course. it's it's fascinating. I mean, five G is one of those ones where everyone uh, keeps saying like, "Oh, it's going to change everything," and I think it will. Uh, you know, based on some of the companies that that we've spoken to uh, that are working in that space. Um, and it'll be exciting to track that. I, unfortunately, we haven't had uh, that that kind of the Mobile World Congress in in yeah. Barcelona for the last couple of years. So, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we can we can all meet again there next year. Um, but but uh, you know, it's been a crazy year because yeah. of this this pandemic that we've all uh, lived through, continue to live through, I should say. Um, I know that you're based in Switzerland. Um, you know how, how how are you doing and what what where are you finding joy in kind of the day to day uh during this time well i'm i'm doing very well i mean i for me i i i believe in um i you know walking the talk in terms of lifestyle style balanced uh balance i have a i have a an executive coach with whom i work which is important mm -hmm. um I, I have a personal trainer i mean so things to get out there i enjoy life uh, yeah. and you've got to enjoy life during these particular times and so no, you know, I'm healthy and uh, continue to, to, to do that. Um, it's what we're finding now is uh, using this type of technology is, ch is just changing the way we're working. Uh, uh, we can imagine, but it, uh, also the change, uh, but also, uh, you know, allowing people to learn more, 
I do believe in lifestyle, uh, lifelong learning. And uh, just to, to appreciate the wonderful things of life. And that's, that's very important. And by are the way, guys, plus, um, is, at Cineverse, are you guys working remotely right now? Is that the yeah. structure? Well, pretty much so. I mean, I mean, headquarters is in Tampa. I come out of the, um, I have a global responsibility. Right. Uh, so, uh, but we're using this technology quite often. I was just prior to this call with a, uh, with a peer of mine in the industry, a, a, a customer actually, uh, but a peer uh, doing the same thing I'm doing, but in, in, within her company in the United States. And so, you know, you're, you're just, you feel like, okay, what's the next big experiential uh, event here? Could we be a little sort of like teleporting to the ne next level? I mean, don't, don't, sec don't uh, discount that because that's part po a possibility one of these days. <laughs> You know, I, I would love that. I, I, you know, my personal life, I, uh, my wife is from Spain and, and my kids yeah. actually go to school over there. And so uh, this whole kind of world where we can't travel, I, I really need that teleport. So <laughs> I need to figure out how to do that. Well, you know what? So one of the, uh, just a very important topic, because I'm also in, uh, you know, I, I work in uh, the areas around, there's some startup communities that I look at and I look at also a nonprofits. And so one of the, uh, my colleagues in the industry is, you know, we're looking at how do you deal with uh, age, you know, it, it's not teleporting, but it's more or less, especially for uh, people who are elderly care patients and, 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 you know, how do you use these technologies to, to instantiate a, a reality that they have forgotten. And so, or, or, to to for a memorance right a, a memory and so uh you know this is these are the types of things that we're that I, I'm, I'm definitely looking into and i think for the teleportation part you know the, the old star trek beam me up scotty i think that would be it would be given our our situation be great instead of uh could we not imagine really and we're getting there we're getting there uh, especially with these extended uh, and uh, augmented reality kinds of experiences. Yeah, but, no, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm always interested in the augmented reality elements. Um, and and I, I'm excited to see how uh, over the next, I'd say, five to 10 years, as we have broader bandwidth solutions that will allow us to kind of do more kind of richer interfaces, how those things will develop. But I mean, as you think about, let's say the next like 18 months, couple of years, what, 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 what is popping on your radar as some of the things that, um, that you're excited about um, for, to, to explore in, in more depth? Well, I, I'm going to say the experiential um, technologies, I think that are very exciting. Uh, we, we just touched upon them. And I say that because um, uh, what we're seeing more and more in this whole augmented experiential space, especially when you think, think about what COVID has done, it, people are gaming, right? right? So there's more gamers uh, involved. But uh, also, uh, I, I think there's going to be more and more uh, discussion around how do we use these technologies for for healthcare, how do we use these technologies for uh, work, uh, work, you know, work, work environment? How do you sort of uh, do that? I think that's more going to be more and more what I see in the 18, 18 months. And I, I, I do, it, it's here. I mean, we can say our reality is here, but I also see a gamification aspect mm -hmm. of this, you know, um, and a gamification aspect is I'll choose to cooperate with you. If you, you know, what is that? What can that be? If we, we have sort of this cooperative coin type of thing, a cooperative gaming type of thing that would be yeah. interesting in itself. I think the hum I think human resources um, practice is going to change. It's changing now. Um, they're going to be more, much more technology uh, focused. Uh, yeah. and, and so they'll be much more critical. So I see well, all of so, that. There's like, so you know, many opportunities. I, I uh, you know, it was about this time last year where it just became so apparent that all these events that, um, you know, where I, I would normally uh, bump into you, Monique, you know, yes. are, were disappearing and going virtual. True. And these, these technologies that were supporting this virtual solution, whether it be uh, Zoom or, um, you know, Teams, it really didn't really matter. They, they offered such a limited solution to that experiential uh, feeling that we would all have when you co you know can actually be with people, and so I think there's a tremendous opportunity to yeah. go deeper uh, with it right now. 
I absolutely agree. And I think that's what we're going to see is much more experiential uh, the way you and I are talking, but we're sort of in, we're really, it's, it's going to be a, an experience we see. Um, we're, we have this technology developed already. And experiential means not only uh, being able to be in an environment, a, a place uh, where we're kind of simulating a, a real, well, we're not simulating, it is real life, but you can have experiential in terms of smell. You can have experiential in terms of taste, et cetera. And so that for me is uh, something that I see that's going to be much more developed. I also believe that uh, we're, we're at the tip of the iceberg on, what, on this capability. And that's going to change the way you think about what is regular, uh, what is regular regulation look like in this space? How do, how do laws change in this space? Right. Um, and, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's exciting. Well, I am. That is very, very exciting. And um, I, I, I now will be thinking a lot about how, you know, the s smell will be incorporated into uh, the games that I like to play, video yeah. games that I like to play. But that's that's amazing. Well, listen, Monique, thank you for joining us today on Uncaged. Um, if, if people wanted to connect with you, where should they find you? Well, I mean, uh, I, you know, sort of, I, I can say LinkedIn is the uh, probably yeah. the most uh, most uh, obvious space here. Uh, so I think that would probably be Great. the better place. And by the way, a plug for the book that I'm coming out with, the humanized Great, go for it. Go the for it. humanized internet coming out in about a month. The humanized That's, internet. Well, you know, I think Monique, we might need to have you back to talk more about about the book and what what you're covering in that and and. Uh, we definitely need a more humanized internet, for sure. For sure. Um, well, we've been talking to Monique Morrow today on Uncaged. Uncaged is a program that provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe. We've been talking to Monique Morrow in Switzerland today uh, about uh, what she's working on at Cineverse. We've covered a lot of topics, ethics in technology, augmented reality, experiential, the experiential future of digital uh, it's been an amazing, amazing conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Monique, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. My pleasure, Pat. Thank you.